So that's how, after rain, you can start a fire from just the materials that are around you. It might take a while to find the, the proper materials, but if you look hard enough and think, then eventually you'll find the right stuff. It was an amazing thing. Last night, the whole night, the wind came from the west, southwest, but mostly the west, and blew everything over in the garden. The, the sunflower seed, the sunflowers, and my pot of, oh, it was terrible. It was just terrible. It was awful. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to Living with the Ancients. It's been raining pretty hard for the past couple days, so I figured it was the perfect opportunity to go into the woods and make fire. No, not with our hot pink sacred Bic, but with sticks and leaves and dust and whatever we can find. So today is all about sourcing the proper materials. In this wet condition, where is the dry stuff, okay? We need to find the fireboard, the spindle, um, every component except for the cord, okay? All we have is a cord, a knife, and a hatchet. And we'll see what happens. It's always a test, always looking for uh, a way to push our skills is the way to grow. Here we go. Oh yeah, this is exactly what we're looking for. Is this stuff right in here. See how this right here is wet. But this in here is dry. It was covered by this. The reason it was dry on the east side, more pretty dark, pretty dry, but on the west side it was soaking wet. <laughs> All right, everybody, so the first thing you want to do once you find some dry material here, this uh, powdery stuff, powdery bark, inner bark for uh, ultimately to be ground to add as a coal extender. First thing you want to do is put it in your pocket so it continues to dry as you search for other dry materials. And what you want to do also is take everything like this birch bark and you want to test it. You want to put it to your lips you have a built-in hydrometer in there that will tell you how much moisture is in it. And if it feels cool to your touch, then you know it's going to be a little too wet. So test that. If it, if it feels room temperature, you're good. What we have here is our other friend, the birch, but this is a different one. This is the yellow birch, um, Betula alleghaniensis. And as you can see, these little pieces, these little wisps, ooh, they're like bone dry. Look at that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, looks so good. Dryer in a covered bridge. Kiss it. Mm. <laughs> Man, this is awesome. Yeah, so now we'll see if we can't find material for a nice dry fireboard and spindle. Um, we're going to need a handhold too if we can find a rock or a piece of hardwood or some kind of uh, wood that maybe a spot in the limb where there's a nice knot where it's a little harder than the actual spindle itself. And we're going to get some of this bark here too because this tree is nice and dead and it's pretty dry. <laughs> so here we have our friend, uh, the balsam fir. Still has the bark on for the most part, but it's been dead for a while. No needles or anything, at least for a season, at least for this summer. Um, so the chances are that the center of this is nice and dry um, despite the rain, depending on how long it's been dead. So this would be my best bet as far as finding dry firewood. Um, after two days of rain. Where's he going? 
be a lot of good kindling on that too. A lot of teeny sticks. Check it out. Ooh, and it feels like this tree's been dead for a little while. Uh, they're snapping nicely. So that gives me a lot of hope for, for the center being uh, <clears throat> good quality for a fireboard and spindle, even after the rain. Mm -hmm. Testing, always testing. So here we have our teeny tiny sticks, baby. Look at these things. Teeny tiny, baby. Look at that, baby. Oh, so nice. Okay, so what we're we gonna do? They're nice and dry. Mm hmm, mm hmm. They're nice and dry. So we're also gonna put these in our pocket. <laughs> gives me hope. <clears throat> okay, so we're ready to start putting together our fire kit and then ultimately build our fire. We have our teeny tiny super dry birch bark fluff here. Uh, we have our teeny tiny, teeny tiny sticks. We have some coal extender from inside the hemlock. We're gonna put our fire right up on top of this birch bark here and then we're gonna use this birch bark also to add to our fire. And we have these nice dry sticks um, from our friend the balsam fir that will ultimately also make our fireboard. So we're gonna carve our fireboard out of this end here, maybe this section, and then we're gonna whittle this down, uh, this end here for our spindle, okay? spindle here. That's a big spindle. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to whittle this way, way down. We're going to put our knife on here. This is a nice safe way to do this. Split it right off the side. Okay. Squirrely man. <laughs> He's not happy I'm here. He's like, yo man, don't be trying to steal my nuts, man. It's like you see those hickories over there, man. Those are my nuts, man. My hickory nuts. It's probably more like, what's the guy doing down there? I hope he's not stealing my hickory nuts. Oh my god. You better not be trying to steal my nuts. Better keep after him. I better chatter him. Maybe I'll drive him away if I chatter enough. At least I'll tell everybody else in the forest that he's here. <laughs> That's the wonderful thing about going into the woods, you know? It's never the same. But you can always count on the red squirrels. <laughs> to tell everybody else you're there. Unless, of course, you move slow enough with the right intention. Then you can get past them. Now 
need a bow. So we have all the parts and pieces. We're just gonna carve our notch, our little hole here and our handhold, and our little depression in our fireboard and get this going. You wanna carve right into the center of where the knot is, okay? So it's less likely to burn through. So we have our P-cord. Okay. So before you make your fire, before you go to make your coal, you wanna make sure that the teepee fire structure is built. So you start with your teeniest, tiniest little sticks. This little teepee. And then you get your other sticks up in there. Some more teeny tiny ones. Okay. And then you're gonna put your next size sticks. Pencil lead size. On up. So you test the wind, the wind's coming this way. So what you wanna do is make sure your door, where you're gonna put your tinder bundle, is facing so that the prevailing wind's coming across it to help to fuel that fire, or you can face it right into the wind, okay? So we have that. And what you would do ultimately is You'd add bigger and bigger sticks to it, um, to your okay size, up to your wrist size, all the way around here before you get the fire going, okay? If you really wanted to make some coals for heat and for cooking.